Hello, and welcome to Tech Report. On this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to review for you the Acer Easy Store Home Server. Hello and welcome to this, my first episode of Tech Report in full high definition. Now, longtime viewers of Tech Report will know that I've done a few experiments with high definition in the past. However, with my new Sony Handycam HDR PJ10 camcorder, some new high definition backdrops, the ability to source HD footage from over the air and subscription satellite television, as well as a slightly revised logo, I am now ready to embrace high definition to its fullest extent. I'll have an episode of Tech Report dedicated to how my new camcorder performs later on, but for now, let's get back to talking about servers. And as many longtime viewers of Tech Report will know, I run my own web server, my own FTP, DNS, and Active Directory server off my home internet connection. Now, I recently became aware that after storing all of my movies, TV shows, and various other media formats on this server, that I was running out of hard drive space. And because the Acer Aspire Revo uh, only has a single hard drive bay, the quest for a new media server began. In this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to review for you the Acer Aspire Easy Store 340, my new home server. Now by default, the Acer Easy Store ships with a copy of Windows Home Server. Uh, now Windows Home Server is actually a pretty good operating system if you're a basic home server user. Um, it's based off of Windows Server 2008 and does a lot of tasks that most people would expect it to do. Now unfortunately for me, uh, Windows Home Server doesn't quite cut it. It's missing a few key features, uh, such as the ability to join or control a domain. Now what I've opted to do is to overwrite the original installation of Windows Home Server and instead install Windows Server 2008 Release 2, um, a full server operating system that does absolutely everything I could ever want it to. Um, now in a moment I'm going to show you just how to do this, um, but first of all let's look at some of the things that Windows Home Server can do. File serving. Windows Home Server does a great job of sharing local files and folders across a local area network. It allows for custom permissions and, of course, supports multiple drives. Windows Home Server also operates as a web server if you install Microsoft Internet Information Services or a third-party web server such as Apache. Uh, you can easily install IIS onto Windows Home Server and doing so does not violate the, uh, the user license agreement. Uh, so if you want to host your own web pages from home, you can easily do so using Microsoft or third-party services. Of course, Windows Home Server can also be used as a pretty good basic miscellaneous server. Um, if you want to run third-party applications such as uTorrent uh, or a webcam capturing program, uh, you can install these programs just as you would with any basic desktop version of the Windows operating system. You can remote desktop into Windows Home Server uh, and be presented with a full graphical user interface, be presented basically with the full Windows desktop and go ahead and install whatever programs uh, as you like. Now, if these sorts of things are what you, the only things you really want to be doing with your home server and you're not really into modifying uh, your equipment and potentially voiding your warranty, then you should probably just uh, stop right here and uh, get to enjoying some of the great features of Windows Home Server. However, if you want to be able to run a domain out of your own house and you want your Windows Home Server box to control it, or you just want to be able to join a domain from your Windows Home Server box, then you're going to need to switch it over for a different operating system. And in the next couple of steps, I'm going to tell you how to install a full operating system, Windows Server 2008 R2, onto this little box. Now just a quick disclaimer, um, you're going to want to back up any data that you have on your Acer home server. and. I would also recommend taking the physical operating system hard drive out of the server and hanging on to it. Um, you'll want to do all of this installation on another hard drive so that if you screw up, you can always take that drive out and pop your original Easy Store hard drive back in the server, uh, boot off of it, and uh, still have a functional operating system. Now the main barrier to installing a full operating system on the Windows Home Server is the lack of a graphics card. Um, 
it's pretty difficult to install an operating system if you don't have a graphics card and you can't really see what the computer is prompting you to do or if potentially there are any errors you can't see what those errors are. Um, as far as I can tell there are really three solutions uh, to overcome this problem. The first solution is to get a PCI Express times one graphics card. Uh, the Acer Easy Store actually has an, one expansion slot inside it. It's a PCI Express times one expansion slot. Um, and if you find a really, really, really low form factor graphics card that can fit into that computer um, for a reasonable price, you might want to just buy an external graphics card. Uh, many users on the internet have reported success. However, some haven't reported much success, so it's really sort of a hit and miss deal as to what graphics cards are going to work with this server. The second option is to make a custom VGA cable. Uh, if you take apart the Acer Easy Store, which I've done, um, you'll notice that on the motherboard there is a, uh, a questionable header. Um, now this header is actually a full key PS2 keyboard, PS2 mouse, um, VGA and serial port uh, header. Um, all you need to do is build your own breakout cable. Um, there are many instructions on how to build your own breakout cable or if you want to buy a pre-made breakout cable for about $70, um, take a look at some of the links in the description of this video uh, or the ones just on the bottom of the screen there. Finally, if you don't want to buy a small graphics card to put in your server and you don't really have the skills to make a cable or you're unwilling to buy one, um, you can choose the third option uh, to install Windows 2008 on this server, which is what I actually opted to do. And that is to install Windows 2008 onto a hard drive in a di while the hard drive is inserted in a different computer, then shut down that computer, remove the hard drive from the computer, and insert it into the Acer Easy Store server and turn it on. Believe it or not, following this method actually allows uh, the Acer Easy Store to boot Windows 2008 and after about two or three minutes uh, I was presented with a full running operating system that I could remote desktop into. Uh, now that being said, it's, this is not guaranteed to work. Um, I've tried this from two different PCs, from my desktop PC uh, and from my laptop PC and both installations of Windows 2008 were bootable on the Easy Store uh, but again it could be hit and miss as to whether yours works or not. Um, Windows grabs a lot of drivers and stuff that are specific to the computer it's installing on and if the system is different enough you just may not be able to boot it on your easy store. Now after overcoming the software downfall of this server um, I've been quite impressed actually with the hardware that's under the hood. Let's take a quick look. Um, this, this server is powered by an Intel Atom D410 processor. Uh, the processor has a clock speed of 1.66 GHz and is a dual core 64-bit compatible processor. Um, I definitely know that this is a 64-bit processor because Windows Server 2008 R2 um, only supports 64-bit and I was able to install it uh, as you saw in the previous step without problems. Uh, now 1.66 GHz may not sound uh, like a lot of speed However, I find it's more than sufficient uh, to run five websites, a Magic Jack telephone uh, device, and Cumulus weather station software, along with a webcam capturing program, uh, all at the same time. I have not experienced much lag in this configuration at all. Uh, in terms of RAM, the server ships with two gigabytes of RAM, uh, which can be easily upgraded. Uh, the catch is that there is only a single RAM slot in this server, um, so if you're going to want to upgrade to 4 gigabytes of RAM, you'll actually have to buy a single 4 gig chip and insert it into the server, which can get a little bit expensive. Um, of course, RAM is always coming down in price, uh, so before too long that won't be a big deal. Um, however, I have not upgraded the RAM in my server yet, and I find that 2 gigabytes uh, is more than sufficient running the applications that I detailed before. Now the server ships with a one terabyte hard drive, uh, but has empty slots for three more, uh, meaning you can easily load this puppy up with storage. Currently I have uh, three hard drives in my Acer Easy Store, the original one terabyte, a second one terabyte, and a one and a half terabyte drive, uh, giving me a total of three and a half terabytes of storage space. Right now, that's more than enough, but I, at least I know that I have extra room to upgrade in the future if I need to. 
Now the final thing I consider uh, when buying a server is uh, the power consumption that it's actually going to use. Uh, because my servers run 24-7, 365, or at least ideally if there's no power outages, um, if I'm running a computer that's going to be taking a lot of power, it concerns me a little bit. However, uh, the Acer Easy Store takes less than 40 watts of power uh, with a single hard drive inserted, and uh, that's while the system is idling. Um, I have not actually ever seen the Easy Store, even loaded up with three hard drives, take more than 50 watts of power. And my entire networking cabinet, which includes two servers, uh, a net two network switches, a router, and a cable modem, actually draws less than 80 watts. So it's pretty easy to uh, come up with some low power, um, some low power solutions. And uh, the Acer Easy Store really goes a long way to facilitating that. The extremely low power consumption, small form factor, and quiet fan makes the Acer Easy Store the ideal companion for a small home or office user. The easy upgradeability, copious amounts of hard drive space, and the fact that the server can run Windows 2008 with ease uh, also makes it attractive for any super geek who likes to experiment with computers. Overall, I would have to recommend the Acer Easy Store uh, for any small-scale networking project or for anybody who just likes to experiment with what a server can do. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting.